Yo, 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 so YouTube, we're back here with another video. And today we got episode 7 of season 5 from the Shah. Easily, easily the best episode we've seen thus far. And arguably the best acting we've seen thus far. And not just from this season, but as a collective from the Shah. I know back... Season two, season one, even season three had its moments as far as acting, but this was, this was amazing. Certain parts, for sure, for sure. And I really don't even want to break down the whole episode. I want to hop straight into the meat and potatoes, but I'll have the chapters so y'all can skip, skip around if y'all want, but you know I got to break down the whole thing just so I could give y'all the full content y'all deserve, so... Let's hop straight into it. All right, so boom. Tiff walks in on Emmett and Keisha. First scene of the episode. This was kind of wild. Uh, I kind of got a taste of it from the little trailer from last last uh, episode to this episode, the trailer of this episode. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why she just walked in his crib like that. Knowing he got another woman in there, and she saw what she saw. <laughs> it was kind of funny, because I didn't expect it. I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't expect them to be, like, smashing when she walked in, you know? So, that was kind of crazy. And it also kind of stirred the pot a little bit more for things to come later in the episode. Because the dynamic between Tiff... Emmett and Keisha is really wild right now. I'm going to speak on it a little bit more throughout this video, but y'all see it's a little static right now, all in the air. And honestly, I hope it, it gets better. Tiff seems like she'll let it go eventually. Eventually. Because if we're being totally honest, She's just getting a taste of her own medicine. Am I lying? And I guess she doesn't like how it tastes. But yeah. Let me get off of them. We're going to talk about them a little bit later. So next. I hate to bring this topic up. But they're keeping the baby. If it wasn't confirmed in the last episodes. It was confirmed in this one. They're officially keeping the baby, and <sighs> tragic, tragic. I really hate to do this because of what happens later in the episode, but I was really excited. And then I was excited to see Gemma and Jake excited, you know? Even the dad, like, he had his moments where he's like, all right, I want to prepare you, but... You were the best thing that ever happened to me, you know? It just was a little heartwarming. And Gemma, she was, they were really excited for this baby. And then, <sighs> let me just move on to the next topic. Next, she wants him to meet her parents, which is a big step. It really is. Especially from last episode, I was a little confused. With Shad scrolled through Tinder, I thought they were having problems, or I didn't know what the foreshadowing like meant. Something had to be coming, I assumed, but I guess that was just I don't know why they wrote that in there. But they seem to be in a good place. She wants him to meet the parents, and he's like, "Cool, cool." And then she starts saying all this extra stuff: "Don't smoke, wear a suit, don't tell him you've been in jail." It's like, mm. and she's trying to tell him, no, I just wanted to be a really good first impression. Huh? If you got to change who you are for the first impression, it's not a first impression. It's a fake impression. Remember that. So I'm starting to get like Victor and that reporter girl vibes slightly, you know, but 
I actually do like them because of what happened in the dinner scene. They all tried to violate him. At first, he was kind of acting fake. He was like, yeah, I mean, I don't have time to golf, but I can. Like, bro, if you don't golf, just say that. He asked you a simple question and then asked him if he likes scotch and all that. And he's like, well, I mean, I, I can. So he was being fake at first. And he was trying to dance around their questions and stuff. Then, I don't know if that was her sister or whoever that girl was. She was she was trying to get out of him. She was talking about he ain't this, he ain't that. And what do you do and this and that. And, like, she was just playing him down, doing him sad. If somebody were to come at me like that, I'd just be like, yo, like, what's the issue? Is there is there a problem? But that's just me, because she was doing a lot. She was doing a lot. But anyway, as all these questions and all these obstacles keep coming his way, he's trying his best. He stumbles up and says he wants to jail, after she specifically told him not to, and almost started lying about it. But I'm glad he came clean, and then he just told him how he felt. He told him who he was, the real him. And you gotta respect him for that. You gotta respect him for that. And as they still started to judge him, after they started to realize who he was, he was an ex-convict, he works at a, uh, an organization as a, like a community director at this organization, He's not no big time this, big time that. He's just a man trying to grind it out, you feel me? And he was like, look, I don't really care what y'all think. As long as she by my side, we good, we good, we Gucci. We chilling. We big chilling. We happy. We happy over here, you feel me? And that's all you could really want. And he gained the respect from the pops at least. It seemed like it. It seemed like he gained the respect. So, I don't know. Hopefully, they can continue to be happy. One positive from this episode. Let's get on to the next topic, though. Isha is struggling. Like, she's down bad. Like, she thought she would, and like, we all thought she would. And I, I'm not saying, like, we were paying on her downfall, but she was going through a lot. School, EJ. I said EJ. What's her son's name? Ronnie. And then moving out, moving away from everybody. No Christian, even though she got with Emmett. But point blank period, she was going through a lot in a short amount of time and trying to do it all by herself for the most part. So that one scene was actually kind of wild. The music playing, and that's exactly how college would be. The music playing loud next door. You trying to work on a paper. I mean, we don't usually have no kids crying in the background, but I felt so bad looking at that little baby. He, <laughs> I know it was a, like, an acting scene, you know? They probably told him to cry, or, or I don't know how that really works. How does that work? How do they get babies to cry on cue and then off cue like that? That's kind of crazy. But neither here nor there. I felt bad for that little boy just looking at him, even though I know... His pain wasn't real, but man, I was like, jeez, go get that baby. Stop him from crying. Like, did y'all see his shirt? Like, he had drooled all the way down to here. <sighs> and then I was like, all right, I can't feel bad for him. Then I was like, you know what? He's still actually crying, so I feel bad for him. But anyway, all for him, Keisha... She's going through a lot, really going through a lot. And then she's got the, the Keisha, I mean the Keisha, the Tiff drama. So, she's struggling, she really is. How y'all think that whole going to school, raising the kid at the same time thing is gonna play out? I'm rooting for her. And is she playing, I mean, is she, I said playing. Is she running track? I know, I could have swore that's what she was going to school for. But then, like a whole bunch of stuff happened. And I think she ended up going to a different school than she had originally planned. 
I don't know, the story kind of faded away from that. But next, not only is Keisha struggling, but it seems like EJ is too. And his parents aren't helping the issue at all. They can't get it together and seem to co-parent like they agreed to do in the first place if they weren't going to be together. You know? I understand both of them got a lot on their plate, but it seemed like they always try to make him a priority, but that's just from the outside looking in. Obviously, they're not. If my, point. my man's all the way behind, and they're not really taking notice of it. So, hopefully, they can get that together and get that straight. And Tiff, I really don't understand how she can be this mad. Now, me personally, if I was in Tiff's shoes, which I wouldn't be, but it's like, she literally did the same thing to Emmett that Emmett is doing to her. Actually, a little worse, because what Emmett's doing to her, they're, they were not in a relationship. When Tiff went off to be with Rob, they were still in a relationship. They was in an open relationship, but they were in one. So, <sighs> I hope she realizes that sooner rather than later, because it's starting to affect my boy EJ. And that's not cool. That's tough. That's real tough. But, man, all right, we're getting closer to the meat and potatoes. Just chill, just chill. Next. Now, I know I talked a little trash about the dynamic between Kevin and his new girl. And Kevin's character in general, I really just don't see or like where it's going, his character is going. But I will be honest, his girlfriend is growing on me. She's still odd, but... The positive energy she brings to the episodes, you can't not like it, you know? I rock with her. I do. And this little, I don't even want to call it a love triangle, but I'm just going to call it, like, I'm going to call it a love triangle. It's a little love triangle between, what's her name? Lene, Kevin's girlfriend, I still don't know her name, and Kevin. Like, this is... This is a dynamic that might work. The two girls being friends, Kevin being the boyfriend, and then the, like the big brother, the Lene. Like, this could work. Because the original trio, Jake, Papa, and Kevin, they're still friends, but they don't, they don't even hang out together anymore. What happened to that? Why did that stop? I don't know. They went from being everywhere together to never being seen together. At one point, Jake and Papa didn't like each other. <laughs> Jake and Kevin were going through that Gemma situation. And now it's like, they're distant. I mean, I, I, I understand it. That, that actually happens in real life. You go from hanging out with somebody every single day to barely talking to them anymore. But for the show's purposes, man, they're supposed to be the three amigos, the three stooges, the three musketeers. Now they all hang out with different people. I don't even know who does Jake hang out with besides Gemma. He hangs out with Kev more than Papa does. But Papa and Bakari, like, what? But I can't be the only one that likes this little new dynamic. I'm glad I'm glad it's happening. I'm glad it's happening because Kevin's character and his storyline was just going all the way to the left. It was losing me for a for real. But next, finally, we're in the meat and potatoes of the episode. The concert. Now, let's just start all the way from the beginning. Like, oh my gosh. 
they wouldn't let Bakari in the club because he had the wrong shoes on or something. I don't know why. But Papa pays the security guard off, and he's still trying to fight him. Like, what are you doing? Who fights a security guard? Come on now. Come on now, bro. And then he tried to fight the dude behind us. Just give me a minute to compose myself. All right, man. Now, next in the episode, he introduces him to Lene, Gemma, and what's her name? Maisha was on the stage already. So he introduces him to them too. And he, he looked like he got an eye for Lene. He like, who is that? Oh, you got nice braids. Like, bro, chill. Chill. <laughs> and she's like, thanks or whatever. And then, all that aside, Maisha get on the stage, killing it. I'm vibing. I'm, hey, 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 hey. I'm turning it up with Maisha. Because she's going crazy. And if y'all wasn't listening, like, I was really turning up. I was listening to the lyrics and everything. If y'all didn't know, she dissed Kevin in that song. Did y'all hear that? She was like, I wanted Kevin, but his like his mind was too little or something. And he couldn't see the real queen. He she said something along those lines before I got distracted. But she was actually spitting about real stuff that was happening in the episodes. I'm gonna have to go rewind that and listen to what she was saying. Because like I said, I got distracted by what happened next. So this dude, everybody vibing, everybody having a good time. Aisha killing it. Gemma having an amazing time watching her. Like, she heard little manager now or whatever. Excuse me. And Bakari goes to try to check. I don't even know if it was the dude at the door or the security guard or both. He starts just acting tough. Like, this was so random. Like, nothing even happened. Why? What triggered him to do that? Were you not having a good time? So he goes over there, tries to act all tough, starts tussling, starts fighting, all that. You feel me? And then he pulls the strap. The security guard sees him, immediately grabs him, and... I don't know if he shot to warn everybody, like, or not warn everybody, but warn the security guard to let go of him, or if it was like a misfire, or I don't, I don't know, or maybe he. There's a lot of things that could happen for for the gun to go off. But point blank, period, it, it goes off, and everybody starts. Oh my God, what's going on? What's going on? And. Everybody starts to lead the club. Y'all know how black people are. Let's just be honest. Gunshots, that's one thing. And then people start running. No matter if they know what's going on or not, they're going to start running too. So both of them things happening, you know everybody in there was going crazy. So everybody trying to get to the door. They did not jam it down. I can't even speak. They did not jam it down. She pregnant on the stomach. They didn't knock Shorty down, and now she in the hospital. Pops walk in, ask the doctor, man, can I see, can I see my kid? No, 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 what's your kid's name? Gemma, I forgot what you said the last name is, but Gemma, this is that. She's stable. Jake walks over, what about the baby? And first off, doctors don't do this. <laughs> but he's like, I'm sorry. Jay starts mm, mm, punching it, punching the air with it. He's heated. More sad than heated, but you know how it gets. You know how it gets. And then goes in there to comfort her. Well, before he goes in there to comfort her, he pretty much asks what happened or how did this happen or 
something like that. And I'm glad Maisha spoke up, cause you know how people be like, like you wasn't like snitch is one thing, but she just had to let my man's know what what happened. But Kari, like, your time has come. You're done. You're done. You're done. Now, she tells him what happens, and he realizes like none of this would have happened if old dude hadn't started cutting up for no reason. So he realizes that even more mad goes to try to comfort Gemma and they have a moment. They really have a moment. <sighs> then he gets back to the cribbo. Sees old dude starts punching on him. Well before he sees old dude he starts crying to, to Trig. Victor. My fault. Starts crying to Victor. I don't know if he had told him what happened yet. Because it seemed like he was just crying and it just stopped. And then he goes starts punching on dude. And then he tells him. If it wasn't for you. I would still have my kid right now. Me and my girl lost my kid because of you. Doing that stupid stuff. Now he realizes it and he's like. Oh, oh my, my, my bad bro. I didn't, I didn't, come on, come on, bro. <sighs> and before I even continue, I kind of said this in the last episode, last video. With Gemma and Jake having the baby, there's so many different outcomes. And then let alone them keeping the baby it's still so many different things that could happen right and shout out to the writers you know what let me just take a, another second to pause and like I said at the beginning this is probably the best acting I've seen in a while on the shot this episode made me actually feel something as a viewer I felt like I was there. I felt like I was a part of it. I felt bad for Jake. I felt bad for Gemma. I felt mad at Bakari. I even felt kind of relatable to Shaw when they were interrogating him at the dinner table. I felt a lot of emotions watching this episode. I just got to The writers, the actors, the production, everything. Y'all did y'all thing. Y'all really did. And as much as I hate to say it, again, show aside, just to take a minute to appreciate the art and the acting, gotta give it up to Picard. I don't know his real name, but you doing something with this character. You really are. For me to hate Bakari or dislike him it means you're doing your job correctly and well so I gotta tip my hat to you now back to the show he starts beating up on him he realizes yeah you effed up you effed up and Jake's like, get out. And I I was so curious to see what Shy was going to have to say. Like, at that moment, you, you can't say nothing. You can't say nothing. Because I'm thinking, Shy going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Kind of thing. You know? But Shy, at least, at least I know that he real enough to, you can't step in front of that. You really can't. You lucky all Jake did was tell him to get out. You lucky that's all he did. You lucky all he did was punch you a couple times. You lucky that's all he did. Because what, what's old dude, Reg? He would have went straight for the strap. Straight for it. And old Trick, his name not Trig for nothing. I don't know why y'all be playing with people. Y'all... 
Same way you thought you was tough pulling the strap. You lucky Jake is being raised right. You lucky. Real lucky. Because it would have got wicked. It would got real scary for you. If he was on Demon Time. Now aside from that, let's move on. He leaves the crib. And I'm thinking, we're going to get like a little backstory. He's about to go to his mom's house. You're going to meet her or his grandma or his aunt or something. He goes straight to Papa's house. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie to you. How y'all feel about Papa letting him in? I mean, he's... Dad's a pastor. You know, Papa's a nice guy. Seems like he wants Bakari to be his friend. Bakari wants him to be his friend. But again, I don't really know where this dynamic is going either. But... He lets him in the crib. But kind of back to what I said before. Jake and Papa and Kevin, they supposed to be the three amigos. They supposed to be the... You feel me? Like, <laughs> I can't even do it. They supposed to be something like this. All three of them. You feel me? And when Jake find out, it's going to get real rough for Papa. Like, the one place... You could have went, you went to my best friend crib, and my best friend let you in? Wow. Wow. That's, that's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. But even from Papa's perspective, it's like, I still don't understand who, what he's being drawn to. I don't, I don't never know. But yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to wrap it up there. It's so many different things that could happen for the next episode. It's, it hurts my head even thinking of different outcomes. So I'm not going to make any predictions, nothing like that. But I do want y'all to engage with me. This was the best episode so far. I want to talk to y'all. Y'all let me know what's on y'all mind. If y'all agree with me, y'all disagree, y'all feel like I missed something. But yeah. Other than that, that's going to end up this video. I'm not going to tell you to like, to comment, share, or subscribe. Because if y'all rock with me, y'all going to do it anyway. And I'm going.